Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Gaurav Dhawan Lal, and with me is VC Pramod with the evening news. The headlines: NDA's presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu crosses 50% mark of total valid votes at the end of the third round of counting, set to become 15th president of India. Both houses of parliament adjourned for the day following postponement of discussion over crucial bills. Airlines not to charge any additional fee for issuing boarding pass at check-in counters on airports, says Civil Aviation Ministry. Congress President Sonia Gandhi appears before Enforcement Directorate in connection with alleged money laundering case linked to National Herald. Maharashtra government announces no covid induced restrictions for upcoming dahi handi ganesh utsav muharram and other festivals india at forefront of extending economic assistance to sri lanka says ministry of external affairs anurani qualifies for the final of javelin throw event at world athletics championships in the us Neeraj Chopra to play in the qualification round tomorrow and in badminton India's Parupalli Kashyap advances to quarter finals of Taipei Open badminton NDA's presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu has crossed the 50% mark of total valid votes at the end of the third round of counting thereby paving the way to become the 15th president of India President Ram Nath Kovind has congratulated and conveyed his best wishes to Shrimati Draupadi Murmu on being elected as the 15th President of India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated Shrimati Draupadi Murmu ji on this feat in a series of tweets. Mr. Modi said, "India has scripted history." He said, "At a time when 1.3 billion Indians are making Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav." a daughter of india hailing from a tribal community born in a remote part of eastern india has been elected as our president the prime minister said shrimati murmu ji's life her early struggles her rich service and her exemplary success motivates each and every indian mr modi said she has emerged as a ray of hope for our citizens especially the poor marginalized and the downtrodden he said Shrimati Murmu has been an outstanding MLA and minister and she had an excellent tenure as the governor of Jharkhand. Mr Modi expressed confidence that she will be an outstanding president who will lead from the front and strengthen India's development journey. The prime minister thanked all those MPs and MLAs across party lines who have supported the candidature of Ms Murmu. Mr Modi said her record victory augurs well for our democracy. The Rajya Sabha today took up a discussion on the weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems prohibition of unlawful activities amendment bill 2022 the bill seeks to amend the weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems prohibition of unlawful activities act 2005 the 2005 act prohibits unlawful activities such as manufacturing transport or transfer of related to weapons of mass destruction and their means of delivery Weapons of mass destruction are biological, chemical or nuclear weapons. The bill bars persons from financing any prohibited activity related to weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems. The house took up a discussion on the bill in the post lunch session amid noisy scenes. Opposition members continued their protest on the issues of price rise and GST hike on essential commodities. Later, members from the DMK, AAP, left NCP and others staged a walkout. Participating in the discussion, Prashant Nanda of the BJD supported the bill saying that it is in the interest of the country. He said the passing of this bill will strengthen the security of the country. Ayodhya Rani Reddy of YSR Congress lauded the central government for bringing this legislation. Supporting the bill, Manoj Kumar Jha of the RJD said It is in accordance with international commitments. BJP MP Prakash Jawdekar also spoke on the bill. When the discussion was on, Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs V. Murali Dharan said the government intends to pass this bill with the active participation of the opposition. He urged the chair to take up the discussion later. Following this, the presiding officer took the sense of the house and adjourned it for the day. 
The Lok Sabha was adjourned for the day when it reassembled in the afternoon, following the postponement of a discussion over a crucial bill. Minister of State for Science and Technology, Dr. Jitendra Singh, proposed the postponement of the discussion over the Indian Antarctic Bill 2022, stating that there was no opposition member present as the crucial Antarctic environment matter had come up for discussion for the first time. He opined that the opposition should have been in the House when such a crucial matter had come up for discussion, stating that it will not be proper to pass an important bill without the opposition and a proper discussion. The minister proposed the postponement of the discussion for some other day. The government has approved 257 ideas under MSME Idea Hackathon 2022 and reimbursement of 1196 trademarks relating to the MSME sector for financial assistance. Minister of State for Micro, Small and Medium and Entrepreneurs MSMEs Bhanu Pratap Singh Verma informed the Lok Sabha in a written reply that 186 patents 53 designs and 11 geographical indications have also been approved for providing financial assistance with an estimated outlay of 34 crore rupees in another written reply the minister said nearly 4 lakh 30000 youth including 1 lakh 41000 women have been trained under the entrepreneurship and skill development program esdp scheme during the past 4 years in a written reply to another question the minister said khadi and village industries has generated employment of over 3.34 crore persons till March this year under various schemes the government has taken down 747 websites 94 youtube channels and 19 social media accounts working against india in 2021 22 Responding to a question in the Rajya Sabha today, Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur said that his ministry has taken strong action against YouTube channels working against the interest of the country. He said these actions have been taken under the Information Technology Act 2000. इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी एक्ट दो हजार के सेक्शन सिक्सटी नाइन ए के अनुसार भारत की अखंडता और प्रभुता को ध्यान में रखते हुए निर्णय समय समय पर किए जाते हैं और हाल ही में दो हजार इक्कीस बाईस में भी भारत सरकार के सूचना प्रसारण मंत्रालय ने ऐसे लगभग ट्वेंटी फोर यूट्यूब चैनल्स को और उन्नीस सोशल मीडिया अकाउंट्स को बंद करने का काम किया है और सात सौ सैंतालीस यू आर एल्स जो है देश के खिलाफ काम करते थे उसके खिलाफ काम इस सरकार ने किया Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur has said that all advertisements telecast on private satellite TV channels are regulated in accordance with the advertising code prescribed under the Cable Television Networks Rules 1994. In a written reply in the Rajya Sabha today, Mr. Thakur said the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting issues advisories from time to time to broadcasters for ensuring compliance with the advertising code. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur has said that the government is committed to ensure the right to freedom of speech and expression enshrined in the constitution. In a written reply in the Rajya Sabha today, Mr. Thakur said, Press Council of India (PCI), a statutory autonomous body, has been set up to preserve the freedom of the press and improve the standards of newspapers and news agencies in the country. Mr. Thakur said, PCI is also empowered to take sio moto cognizance in matters on the pressing issues concerning freedom of press and safeguarding of its high standards. The minister said, the World Press Freedom Index is published by a foreign non-government organization. Reporters without borders, and the government does not subscribe to its views and country rankings. The Civil Aviation Ministry has said that airlines cannot charge any additional fee for issuing boarding pass at check-in counters on airports. This clarification came following reports that the airlines are charging additional amount for issuing boarding pass from the passengers. In a tweet, the ministry said this additional amount is not in accordance with instructions given under provisions of Aircraft Rules 1937. Civil Aviation Minister Jyoti Raditya Sindhya has said that his ministry has launched a regional connectivity scheme (RCS) Uran Ure Desh ka Aam Nagrik to stimulate regional air connectivity and make air travel affordable to the masses. In a written reply in the Lok Sabha today, Mr. Sindhya said. Uran is a market-driven scheme and interested airlines based on their assessment of demand on particular routes submit their proposals at the time of bidding. The government today said India-UK trade talks are on track 
and free trade agreement negotiations will be completed by the 31st of August. Commerce Secretary BVR Subramaniam said this while talking to the media after signing two MOUs and a framework agreement with the UK. He added that irrespective of the party in power in the UK, the logic of FTA with India is irreversible. Congress Interim President Sonia Gandhi today appeared before the Enforcement Directorate in Delhi in the National Herald case. She was accompanied by her daughter and party leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra. Ms. Gandhi's son and Congress leader Rahul Gandhi was also questioned for five days in this case earlier. Mr. Rahul and Ms. Sonia Gandhi are being probed under the provisions of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act in this case. The BJP today hit out at the Congress for its protest after the Enforcement Directorate asked the party interim chief Sonia Gandhi to appear before it for questioning. Addressing the media in New Delhi, senior BJP leader Ravi Shankar Prasad said, The Congress protest is not a satyagraha, but a duragraha against the law as well as the institutions of the country. He said both Ms. Gandhi and party leader Rahul Gandhi are accused in the case and are on bail. कांग्रेस पार्टी सत्याग्रह नहीं देश और देश के कानून और देश के संस्थाओं के खिलाफ दुराग्रह देश को हम ये बताना चाहते हैं कि मामला है क्या सोनिया जी और राहुल गांधी इस मामले में एक्यूज्ड हैं बेल पर हैं जिसमें धोखाधड़ी फोर ट्वेंटी का भी आरोप मेट्रोपॉलिटन मजिस्ट्रेट ने कॉग्निजेंस लिया उसके खिलाफ हाईकोर्ट गए हाईकोर्ट ने पिटिशन रिजेक्ट किया सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने पिटिशन रिजेक्ट किया इनकम टैक्स ने इस पूरे मामले को जांच और अनियमितता पर गंभीर टिप्पणी की और टैक्स लगाया उसके खिलाफ इनकम टैक्स ट्राइब्यूनल गए ये लोग वहां भी सफलता नहीं मिली More than 200 crore 91 lakh vaccine doses have been administered in the country so far under the nationwide vaccination drive the health ministry said more than 29 lakh 12000 doses were administered in the last 24 hours During the same period 21,566 new covid cases were reported in the country. India's covid recovery rate is currently at 98.46%. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. NDA's presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu crosses 50% mark of total valid votes at the end of the third round of counting. set to become 15th president of india both houses of parliament adjourned for the day following postponement of discussion over crucial bills airlines not to charge any additional fee for issuing boarding pass at check-in counters and airports says civil aviation ministry congress president sonia gandhi appears before enforcement directorate in connection with alleged money laundering case linked to national herald Maharashtra government announces no covid induced restrictions for upcoming dahi handi ganesh utsav muharram and other festivals india at forefront of extending economic assistance to sri lanka says ministry of external affairs anu rani qualifies for the final of javelin throw event at world athletics championships in the us neera chopra to play in the qualification round tomorrow in badminton india's parupalli kashyap advances to quarter finals of Taipei Open Badminton for quick news updates round the clock follow us on twitter at aia news alerts apne business ko badhane ke liye lijiye aakashwani ka sahyog aur dijiye use bulandiyon ke pankh aapka business local hai ya rashtriya aakashwani deti hai upbhoktaon tak pahunchne ka har vikalp और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो आरोप आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो वरिष्ठ नागरिक हैं क्या आपके मन में सेहत आर्थिक सामाजिक या भावनात्मक मुद्दों से जुड़ा कोई सवाल है आकाशवाणी आपके लिए लेकर आया है कार्यक्रम एक कदम और बुजुर्गों के लिए हर रविवार रात साढ़े नौ बजे एफ एम गोल्ड आरोप आप अपने सवाल हमें व्हाट्सएप नंबर नौ दो आठ नौ शून्य नौ चार शून्य चार चार आरोप भेज सकते हैं या इस पते आरोप ई कर सकते हैं एक कदम और ए 24 जुलाई को सुनिए कार्यक्रम का पहला अंक आपके सवाल हमें 22 जुलाई तक मिल जाने चाहिए 
Welcome back to the evening news. The Maharashtra government has announced that there will be no covid induced restrictions for the upcoming Dahi Handi, Ganesh Utsav, Muharram and other festivals. This decision came after Chief Minister Eknath Shinde and Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis held a review meeting to understand the concerns of Ganesh Mandals and officials related to ensuring law and order. Indian Space Research Organisation ISRO Chairman S. Somnath, along with other senior scientists, inaugurated the Human Space Flight Expo in Bengaluru today to commemorate the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. ISRO is embarking on its maiden unmanned mission, Gaganyaan, soon, and the exhibition showcased the crew module, GSLV Mark III, human-rated launch vehicle, and crew escape systems. As a part of the program, two unmanned missions this year and one manned mission by next year is envisaged. The three-day exhibition in the Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium will also have talks by ISRO scientists and will include film shows. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of this struggle every day. Twenty first of July is the death anniversary of one of the pioneer leaders of the nationalist movement, Umesh Chandra Banerjee. Born on the twenty ninth of december eighteen forty four in Calcutta, Banerjee went to England to study law in eighteen sixty four. In eighteen sixty eight he returned to Calcutta and started his legal practice. He was able to gain a good reputation as a barrister. In eighteen eighty two he became the first Indian to be appointed as a standing counsel. He famously defended Surendranath Banerjee in a case in the High Court of Calcutta. Umesh Chandra Banerjee was the president of the first session of the Indian National Congress in December 1885 at Bombay. In the second session the following year, which was presided over by Dada Bhai Nauroji, Banerjee suggested that the party form standing committees for every province to have good coordination of its functioning. Banerjee was president of the party one more time in 1892 at Allahabad. He also lived in England for a while and practiced law there. While he was a resident there, the Liberal Party gave him a seat to contest in the elections to the House of Commons. Although he was defeated, he became the first Indian to contest elections for the British Parliament. He passed away in Calcutta in 1906, aged 61. AIR News salutes the nationalist leader Umesh Chandra Banerjee. <laughs> We remember freedom fighter Jai Ram Das Daulatram, who was born on the 21st of July 1891 in Karachi, now in Pakistan. In 1915, Jai Ram Das came into personal contact with Mahatma Gandhi and became his follower. He also participated in the Home Rule Movement. Jai Ram Das joined the Indian National Congress and participated in the Non-Cooperation Movement in 1920. He was also a leading activist in the Salt March and the Quit India Movement. Jai Ramda stayed in India during the partition and was appointed the first Indian governor of Bihar. He represented a constituency from Punjab in the Constituent Assembly of India. From 1950 to 1956, Dalat Ram served as the governor of Assam. He breathed his last 
on 1st of March 1979. AIR News salutes the great nationalist. <laughs> We also remember the last Mizo Azad Hind Falls member, that Thwama Rentley, who died on the 21st of July 2019. Born in 1920 in the state's Pukpui village, Rentley had served in the medical corps of the Indian Army prior to becoming a freedom fighter. During World War II, he was sent to Malaysia, where he had fought the invading Japanese soldiers. However, he was captured and taken to Singapore as a prisoner of war. He met Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose when the latter once visited the prison. Following his release, he joined the Azad Hind Forge and fought the British Army in Myanmar along with fellow rebels and Japanese soldiers. However, they surrendered in the aftermath of the bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The British convicted Renthalei for waging a war against them and put him behind bars. He was released two years later in 1945 following the intervention of Mahatma Gandhi. The Indian government awarded him the Tamra Patra in 1972 for his role in the struggle for Indian independence. The noble soul breathed his last on the 21st of July 2019 at the age of 99. We salute this great independence fighter. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Ab har ghar ki chhat par shan se bhairega tiranga Gungunai jayenge nav vikas ke geet Aan baan shan ka prateet राष्ट्रध्वज तिरंगा आइए आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव के पावन अवसर पर इस स्वाधीनता दिवस हर घर फहराते हैं तिरंगा और लेते हैं भव्य और सशक्त भारत के निर्माण का संकल्प आइए हर घर फहराएं तिरंगा The second edition of the Northeast India Festival is being organized from the 29th to 31st of July at the Central World in Bangkok by the Embassy of India in association with Trend MMS of India. India's Northeast region comprises eight states, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Sikkim and Tripura. The first edition of the Northeast India Festival was held in Bangkok in February 2019. This opened up substantial business opportunities for Northeast Indian business community, especially in the tourism, agro and food processing sectors. The focus of this year's festival will be on trade, investment and tourism promotion and exchanges in the field of culture, education and people-to-people connect. The three-day event will be inaugurated on the 29th of July. Minister of State for External Affairs, Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh, will be the chief guest at the festival. You are listening to our program, North East Diary, bringing you enchanting stories from the northeastern part of India. This program is broadcast every Thursday and Sunday at 5.30 p.m. on FM Gold and on our app News on AIR. We look forward to you walking this journey with us twice a week, every week. The External Affairs Ministry today said India will continue to stand by the people of Sri Lanka. Briefing media in New Delhi, Ministry spokesman Arindam Bakchi said India has been at the forefront of extending economic assistance to Sri Lanka. He added that India is one of the countries that have provided the maximum amount of assistance at the time of need to the island nation. Talking to media in Colombo, India's High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, Gopal Bagle, said India would also like to contribute to the Sri Lankan economy by way of investment and building more capacity. 
India and Bangladesh have agreed to effectively implement the Comprehensive Border Management Plan, CBMP, to control border crimes, including smuggling of drugs and narcotics, arms and ammunition, fake currency and gold, among other things. The decision was taken during the 52nd DG-level border conference between the Border Security Force, BSF, and Border Guards, Bangladesh, BGB, which concluded in Dhaka on Thursday. A joint record of discussion, GRD, was signed between the BSF and BGB on the concluding day of the five-day-long conference. Listen to Commonwealth Games Quiz with AIR News Sportscan at 7.20 p.m. every day. All you have to do is reply to a question on the Commonwealth Games. Email your answers at airsportscan at gmail.com. The first correct answer will be selected as the winner and rewarded with a jersey of the Indian Commonwealth Games team. So keep cheering to India, listening to Sportscan at 7.20 p.m. on FM Gold 100.1 MHz and on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. India star javelin thrower Anu Rani qualified for the final of the World Athletics Championships 2022 in the U.S. state of Oregon today. She finished with the best throw of 59.6 meters in her third and final attempt. Olympic champion Neera Chopra will compete in the qualification round Group A of men's javelin throw tomorrow. In cricket, India will take on West Indies in their first one-day international of the three-match series tomorrow at the Queen's Park Oval, Port of Spain. The match will start at 7 p.m. IST. In badminton, India's Parupali Kashyap advanced to the quarterfinals of the Taipei Open Badminton. In mixed doubles, Ishan Bhatnagar and Tanisha Krasto defeated Chang Kai Wen of Chinese Taipei 21-14-21-17 to reach the quarterfinals. At the stock markets, both the key indices posted gains for the fifth straight day today, where the rupee ended marginally higher against the dollar. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National capital Delhi is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with light to moderate rain. Mumbai is likely to have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Kolkata will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature will be around 27 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be 33 degrees. Chennai will witness a partly cloudy sky with the possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. The minimum temperature will be around 27 degrees Celsius and the maximum of 36 degrees. Srinagar will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature will be around 20 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 30 degrees. Jammu will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Muzaffarabad is expected to have thunderstorm with rain. Leh and Gilgit will have a partly cloudy sky. In the south, Hyderabad will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Bengaluru and Tiruvananthapuram are likely to have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Shillong, Itanagar and Gangtok are likely to have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now before we close, the headlines once again. NDA's presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu crosses 50% mark of total valid votes at the end of the third round of counting, set to become 15th President of India. Both houses of parliament adjourned for the day following postponement of discussion over crucial bills. Airlines not to charge any additional fee for issuing boarding pass at check-in counters on airports, says Civil Aviation Ministry. Congress President Sonia Gandhi appears before Enforcement Directorate in connection with the alleged money laundering case linked to National Herald. Maharashtra government announces no COVID-induced restrictions for upcoming Dahi Handi, Ganesh Utsav, Moharram and other festivals. India at forefront of extending economic assistance to Sri Lanka, says Ministry of External Affairs. Anurani qualifies for the final of javelin throw event at World Athletics Championship in the U.S. Neera Chopra to play in the qualification round tomorrow. And in badminton, India's Parupalli Kashyap advances to quarterfinals of Taipei Open Badminton. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night. Aim of Agnipat Scheme, energizing the country's military power with youth power. Hi, this is Mayank. I want to become an Agni Veer for the Indian Navy. Serving the Indian Navy for four years will give a new identity and a different experience from others. I will have the military discipline, training, self-confidence and a stand in society. After serving the Indian Navy for four years, I can continue as a regular cadre or can make a career in any other field. 
Many government sectors and private industrialists have shown their interest to give priority to Agnivis for jobs. I will become an Indian Navy's Agnivis, India's youth savior. Indian Navy, an ocean of opportunities. For details, visit joinindiannavy.gov.in.